Hey, y'all, listen, I just wrapped up the interview with Carlos King and the Puerto Rican princess, Jocelyn Hernandez. And I must say, I have to give honor to where honor is due. I mean, Carlos, wow, you really did a good job in this interview. You really showed me another side of Jocelyn. I have been really hard on Jocelyn. I definitely have always kind of known about the background of Jocelyn and where she kind of comes from, you know, her family situation and all that. But this interview really just gave us a really interesting look in on Jocelyn's life, who she is, what she's done, and where she's going in the future. Y'all, let's get into this little interview review on Carlos King and the Puerto Rican princess, Jocelyn Hernandez. Welcome to of Royer's Review. If this is your first time, welcome. If not, I'm glad you're back again. Remember to hit the like button on this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell on all. That way you see each and every time I post a video with you in mind. Y'all, let's get right into this. Listen, this interview was really, really good. I'm just going to share some notes real quick. I'm going to throw this up on the screen. I'm going to show the little uh, preview of it. Um, and then I'm going to get out of here, okay? So, so um, Jocelyn um, opens up, the, or Carlos opens up the interview, welcoming Jocelyn, you know, letting her know this is a safe space. We're here for you, Puerto Rican princess. This is your time, your energy, okay? So, you know, Jocelyn, you know, opens up the interview explaining, you know, you know, she came from my, down in Miami, um, down from Florida, moved to Atlanta, and, you know, she was a stripper in Florida. She decided she didn't want to strip no more, okay? So she came on up to Atlanta. She said she, you know, was working at a club. Um, one of her fellow dancers, you know, um, his daughter was into music. Jocelyn never really wanted to be in the music scene. She wanted to manage. Well, she talked to her homeboy about, you know, being, you know, finding a producer to help manage this young lady, you know, and for her, met Stevie J, okay? Now, she said, she didn't know who Stevie J was. She never intended to, you know, be linked up with Stevie J the way it all happened. But within two weeks, two weeks of meeting Stevie J, she met Mona Scott Young. And Mona, after she met her, Mona ran back to the office and said, I found a star and we're going to we're going to put her on the show, okay? Now Carlos tells us that the only reason Jocelyn ended up coming on the show is because they had DJ Drama and his wife at the time were going to come on the show and ended up falling through. So that's how Jocelyn came onto the show, okay? So once Jocelyn met Stevie, you know, they started kind of intermingling and spending a lot of time together, you know, and so she, you know, says that they begin a relationship. Now, she tells us that she was never really into Stevie like that. She was really more so into what Stevie could do for her, okay? And so, you know, um, she said that she didn't sleep with Stevie until after, you know, she met Mona and, you know, they started working together and everything. But it was not an off-grid thing. I mean, I'm looking at my notes, y'all. It wasn't no off-grid thing. She just didn't, you know, meet Stevie and start sleeping with him. That ain't, you know, what she do, she said, okay? You know, and, and if that's the case, she make the people pay, okay? She ain't nothing free up in here, okay? So um, she meets Mona. She gets on Love and Hip Hop. That's how that story kind of intertwines and everything, okay? So um, Jocelyn claims when she, um, you know, when she started, you know, on the show that, you know, she really didn't know 
much about Mimi per se, but you know, her and Stevie was doing their thing. He was getting her put out here. Stevie really opened her up to doing music. She was talking about how people in the past would try to kind of get her to do music, but Stevie was really the one to really open that door for her and, you know, make her really want to be a performer because he's seen a star in her. And Carlos, you know, said that that's one thing Stevie can do. When he sees a star, he recognizes a star and he's on it, okay? So, you know, her and Stevie, their birthday is like either the day before one another's or the day after or whatever that situation is. So that's how they really connected and got close. She said her and Stevie party down. She was 23 when she met Stevie J. So she was in her, you know, party years, her 20s, living it up, doing her thing. And she said Stevie was good for that. That is what really kept their relationship connected because he was just such a fun guy. He knew how to have a good time, okay? Um, Carlos, one thing I will say about Carlos is that he gets these questions in. He gets those good, juicy questions that you really want to know, but you know, certain only certain people can ask them. So Carlos asked Jocelyn what was her favorite scene from the show, and her favorite scene was with... <laughs> She came in the house and Mimi and Stevie was talking and she said, hey, maid, I, I see you got your maid outfit. <laughs> and that is one of my favorite scenes like of Love and Hip Hop. Jocelyn has so many good scenes, but that's one of my favorites. You know, um, Carlos also got into the relationship with her mom and, you know, how Jocelyn grew up. And Jocelyn been on her own, has been on her own since she was 16. Her mom has six kids with five different baby daddies. She says she feels like her mom nor her family really ever gave her an opportunity to be anything or to become anything great. They never showed her the way how to do it. She said her mom does not speak English. She doesn't have a driver's license. Her mom always chose men over the children. So, you know, she's always had a struggling relationship. Carlos brought up, you know, he remember airing some of the scene where Jocelyn and her mom had a conversation and Jocelyn was trying to express to her mom that, you know, I turned out the way I did because of you. Like, you were not there. And Jocelyn's mom sees it as, I did everything I could. You were not listening. You didn't want to do, you know, my way. That's how she sees it. But, you know, everybody has their own way, okay? Okay. Carlos also asked about um, Stevie J and the threesome they, they had with Mimi. And, you know, Jocelyn says that she can't speak on that right now because she's coming out with a book and she's going to talk about it in the book. And so, you know, he asked, well, was it good? And Jocelyn says, I've had better head, but you got to read it in the book and find out, okay? She says she's writing her book now because she wants to write a few later on in her life, and she wants to kind of make collectibles of her life, like memoirs, you know, to follow through her life. So she's in her second, you know, journey of her life, you know, going, or uh, her, she's in her 30s, going, coming out of her 20s, going into her 30s. So, you know, she's kind of moving forward in her life, and she wants to write about her 20s, and then, you know, as she goes on going forward. Let's see. Um, Carlos asked Jocelyn about how she handled fame. Jocelyn talked about she struggled with it because, you know, during that time of loving hip hop, especially Atlanta, when Atlanta dropped, that's when social media really kind of took a turn and became the really big thing for everybody. Like everybody was on Instagram. Everybody was on Twitter. Everybody was on Facebook. Like Instagram really took off and blew up right around that time. So she said it was hard for her because, you know, it gave everybody a platform to say something. But she feels like it helped her become who she is today. OK, um, they talked about how much she made on Love and Hip Hop. And Jocelyn, you know, according to what she is saying and, you know, according to Carlos, allegedly was probably the most highest paid VH1 uh, reality star, leaving Love and Hip Hop at 50k an episode okay 50k okay so you know she said on her first season she went from uh 15 uh uh 1500 to 11,000 and then second it was 20 by the last she was at 50 okay and she could have stayed but she was ready to go she didn't want to stay anymore. She said, I could have stayed like the other ladies, you know, and got old and, you know, did my thing there. But it was time for me to move on. 
she said, you know, Carlos asked about her and her relationship with Mona Scott. She said she has not seen Mona. She has not talked to Mona, but she thanks Mona for everything that she did for her. And she wishes Mona the best. Um, she said that they tried to uh, offer her everything to stay, but she chose not to stay. She had to go. Okay. So um, she did talk about how her lawyer had to go to VH1 headquarters because they didn't want to pay her for the last part of the reunion or for the reunion that she did her last season. She got her money. She also talked about Jocelyn's Cabaret, how Carlos was behind literally getting Jocelyn's Cabaret on TV. You know, um, they pitched it to a couple of networks. She, he ran into the gentleman who um, runs, uh, what's that, Zeus? And so they got it on Zeus and it's been going. Jocelyn claims that she makes more money than current reality stars because she reads her contracts. She does create all her contracts. You know, she has everything in place the way she wants it. She gets work bonuses. She gets uh, paid just to show up to work. I mean, Jocelyn is a smart chick. OK, she ain't no dumb one. Not at all. She's a writer. She's a producer. Jocelyn is out here doing her thing. Y'all got to check this Carlos King interview out. Now, this was really good. This was really good. Now, he did throw a little bit of shade. He said that he was talking to someone and he shared with them that, you know, going back to their show, uh, you know, who he said, who shall remain nameless, going back to their show, you know, it's not the move for them. They don't need to do that. Now, me personally, I feel like he was talking about Nene Leakes. And it's just so funny to me because my thing is, the one thing I notice about Carlos is his favorite person is whoever he is in front of at the time. So that, I was just like, mm, okay, I see your shade. I see your T, Carlos. But y'all, let's get into this clip real quick. Um, just a little preview. Carlos, I'm supporting you. Please don't strike me. Y'all go like, subscribe, and comment to Carlos King's channel. He just hit 100,000 subscribers, so congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Y'all, let's get into this real quick. From season one that never aired is when your mom and your stepdad came to visit you. And everybody said, um, seeing her talk to her mother about, I was a young girl and you let me run away and you let me, I have to fiend for myself. And your mom doesn't speak English and you were speaking in Spanish. And it was sort of like they blamed you. We wanted that to be seen because I felt like it would explain why Jocelyn is tough and why she feels the need to go hard. Will that explain who you are as you, as you talk about your childhood like that? Well, you know, I had a, I feel like I had a really rough childhood. Because, I, you know, I feel like I was never given an opportunity, and like for my mom or my family, I feel like I was never given an opportunity, and I just feel like a lot of moms don't take responsibility for them not taking care or guiding their kids the way they need to be guided or the way they need to be dealt with. And I just felt like I could have been so much further in life if she was just a better mom. I mean, you're talking about a lady that has six kids with five different baby daddies, mm. my mom. And you really never just been there for your child or even taught them anything. I mean, she doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't speak English. I've tried. I've spent a lot of money. I've spent a lot of time. But I just feel like she just failed me. And not just me, her other kids, by not giving us an opportunity to be the best we could be. Did she know how to do that? Maybe not. But I'm not going to give her that excuse and I'm not going to give her a pass. And I just feel like I just have to grow up so fast by myself without anybody's help. And I just think it's so fucked that a lot of mothers let their kids do that. It's just unfortunate. You know, it's unfortunate. And I just, you know, I'm not mad. I'm, I guess I'm getting a little emotional because, you know, I don't really get a person asking me anything like that mm -hmm. so like i don't really have to talk about it but you know it's just sad that a mom will have a, a child and a mom will let you run away because if your child is leaving your home it's because you're not doing something right mm -hmm. don't blame this on your kid what's happening in your house that your kid wants to leave your house so badly any given day why my daddy not going to wake up any day and say i want to leave my mama house 
Why would she want to leave the comfort of her mother's house? She got her own room, computers, iPads, food, clothes, entertainment, the beach downstairs. Why would she want to wake up and run away? She's got me. She's got my husband. We're constantly teaching her, taking her places, taking her to work. She went to New York with me for a month to film the cabaret. She went to Puerto Rico for 15 days for vacation. She went to California for a week. She, the whole summer she's out. So this was just a little clip of Jocelyn talking about her family, talking about her mom, talking about her daughter. Y'all, this was a very emotional, um, touchy subject for her. But, you know, I'm glad that Jocelyn really gave us that little tidbit about her mom, about her family, just her history. You know, and it's nice to see that though she struggles, you know, in her journey to... Um, not fight, I guess you could say, because I don't know exactly. I don't understand the whole, like, just this. She She's always on the defense, so I get that, but she just has a very interesting dynamic. Like, I could see her being a great mother, a great wife, you know. I could see her being those things, but the behavior on the outside of the home just be so reckless sometimes. But this has given us a really nice opportunity to see uh, Jocelyn Hernandez, you know, for herself, you know, explaining herself. I see the shade. I see the laughter. I see, you know, the reality star, but then I see the person behind the star as well, which is what Carlos said that he does this for so that we can see the person behind the star. So, Great interview, Carlos. Jocelyn, it was really, really um, nice to get to know you outside of the reality TV in a personable interview. Uh, I don't feel like you have done any really personal interviews in such a setting like this to me. Um, and I know there have been interviews out here, but this was just more intimate, more personal, real Jocelyn Hernandez, Puerto Rican princess, y'all. Listen, go on over there to Carlos King's YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on not just this video, but all of his videos, okay? Do that and turn that notification bell on all that way you see each and every time he posts a video with you in mind, okay? Listen, y'all, leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. Hit Hit the like button on this video. What do you think about this Jocelyn Hernandez interview? Go watch it and share your thoughts and opinions below. Like I said, I thought it was great to get to know her on this uh, in this way. You know, she is just, you know, a, a young girl who had to grow up on her own, figure things out for herself, um, who ended up with a guy who just, Stevie J, you know. And then, you know, she she's just slowly grown into herself, but so smart intelligent about her money and mama says she look bonnie gonna have money bonnie's children gonna have money bonnie's children's children gonna have money okay jocelyn ain't no stupid girl she out here getting that coin y'all hit the like button on this video comment your thoughts and opinions below if you're not a subscriber check out my channel if you like what we got going on over here in royer's world hit that subscribe button and the notification bell on all that way you see each and every time i post a video with you in mind i'll catch y'all next time i love y'all i appreciate y'all bye Boy, world.